Welcome to TKG Games. In this tutorial, we're going to be tackling problem 7, which is 10,000 and the first prime number. By listing the first 6 prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13, we can see that the 6 prime is 13. What is the 10,000 and first prime number? Alright, so for this problem, what we need to do is implement a method that can efficiently dictate if a number is prime or not. And I remember with the problem, the particular question I was asking for factors, I showed you guys how to use square root to get the lower bound of the numbers that can divide um, that number evenly, right? And if we use this for this problem, um, we can decrease the amount of computation um, that would take to find a prime number. And if you guys haven't watched that video yet, I'm still going to go ahead in this video and show you guys how I tweak that um, solution to get uh, the actual uh, method to get the prime number. All right. One thing I like about this particular question is that if you solve one problem, typically uh, you have a way of solving the second problem by using some of the steps in one of the other problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pull up paint here so I can show you guys um, how I came up with the code um, it's not bad okay so let's say for example that we have 16 right okay so by default we know the numbers that can divide 16 would be 16 divided into be 1 2 4 8 and 16 all right so this will not make 16 a prime number because for a number to be prime it can only divide 1 and itself right okay so what people typically do is that they would have a for loop the number and then they'll have a for uh, inner for loop that goes from 1 all the way to 16 to see if the number divides and maybe you have a counter and try to improve the solution something like that all right so what we're going to do here is that well we have 16 so you're going to take the square root of 16 and that's going to equal to 4. So remember, just, we don't want this to be a double one to be either an int or a long, so it could be a full number, all right, a whole number. And what we want to do is we want to take all the numbers that are below 4, including 4 itself, but not including 0. So we can use 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, so now what we do is that we take 16 and we divide them by each of this number. Not the square root, but the number itself, 16, right? Okay. So once we're doing this, we have a counter to check to see how many times it divides the lower half of this value. All right, because this right here would count as the lower half of the numbers that 16 can divide into, and this would be the upper half, okay? So lower half, upper half. All right, so if the counter in the lower half is greater than 1, that means that the upper half itself gets ruled out because the the counter, right, if it's not greater than 1, that means that the only number that would divide 16 would be itself, and that would make the counter 2. So remember that a prime number is a number that divides 1 and itself. So in the lower half, the only number that 16 should divide into is 1, and on the upper half, the only number 16 should divide into is 16, which is itself. But if the lower half, right, uh, if 16 divides any other number than one in the lower half that automatically rules it out as a prime number right so we come down here 16 divides 2 and a uh, 1 it divides 2 and divides 4 so this already rules out the moment it divides 2 we rule that out as it being uh, not being a prime number all right so remember that I showed you guys how to find the factors right so the fact that 16 divides 1 2 and 4 what we can do is we can have a set um, a set, uh, oh, come on. Um, we can have a set which is part of the collection class. Oh my god, All right? We can have a set. And the thing about set data structure is that a set data structure does not have any duplicates, right? So, what we'll do is that we'll take the numbers that we have here, which would be one, two, and four, which would be the lower half, right? And if we divide 16 by one, we get 16. If we divide 16 by two, we get 8 and if we divide 16 by 4 we get 4. Alright so here we have a duplicate in the factors of 4 but what 
set does since you can't have duplicates eventually we just end up with one two four eight and 16 and voila we have all the factors of 16 and this is what we did earlier we're just using this right here we're just using the lower bound of finding the factors of a number to see if the number is actually prime or not and that's it this is how you find the prime okay if a number is prime or not so let's go ahead and actually uh, implement the solution uh give me a moment so i can put away my my uh tablet and then uh, i'll come back All right, so let's go ahead and um, implement the solution using code. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up uh, the project where I solve all of my ULO projects under, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new class. I'm gonna call this 10,000 and one, all right. I guess I could call it 10,001 prime, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I'll leave it like this. So what we need first is we need a method to actually uh, uh, get to check to see if the number is prime or not. So this is going to be static and it's going to be Boolean, right? And then I would put up, give the name is prime. And this is going to take in a long, I'm going to call this number. All right, so the first thing that we need is we need a counter. So create a counter, we really put that to zero. Um, normally we should count from one, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, we computer science people, so we get to deal with zero, especially because we always deal with arrays and stuff. All right, so we create, we're gonna create a variable to hold the square root, and we're gonna cast that because uh, our math library returns a float. So we're gonna cast that to a long, and I'm gonna use a square root here, and I'm gonna pass in number. All right. So next thing I wanna do is create a for loop, All right? So this is gonna use a long. I could use an int. It doesn't really matter. Um, and this is gonna start at one, and then we're gonna say while well, x is less than or equal to the square root, we're going to do x plus plus. All right so i want to say well if number mod x equal equal to zero so we're looking at the lower half of this because we took a square root let's say we took a square root of 16 it's four so four it's here we start at one you have to go from one to four to see if the counter all right if when the number divides x evenly we should increase the counter by one right and if the counter is greater than one then we know that it's no longer divisible by, um, well, we know that x, when that number is no longer a prime number. So what we're going to do is that if, if, um, if number mod x equal, equal to zero, then we say uh, counter, not continue, counter plus plus, right? So we increment now, we can say if um, counter is greater than one, right then we could just return false because counter should um, not be greater than one it should be one for the lower half and then for the upper half we complete the counter should be two if the number is um if the number reaches itself and divide itself right so once we have that we can just go ahead and actually um, return true down here so now we've just efficiently found a way to uh, figure out the number is prime or not. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and create main. And let's give it a little test. Let's just test a few numbers to see if it's prime or not. So I'm going to do SRT. And uh, I'm going to check see if it's prime. And I'm going to pass in 7. So we know 7 is a prime number. So I'm going to run this and that says true. I'm going to go ahead here and put in 16 here and run that. 16 is not prime, so that's false. Um, I'm going to put in two here, we know two is prime. So let's see that passes, so that's true. And then I'm going to go ahead and do something like nine. All right. And the reason why I, um, 
did this problem this way is because 17 is one of those numbers that it's like all the numbers in between them uh pretty much don't divide into it except for one so we did, i wanted to get rid of the fact that i had to go through all those numbers in between 17 or 19 uh pretty much to get to see if it's a prime or not so let's run this and it should be true all right so we've successfully successfully written a method that would find the prime if the number is prime or not all right so let's go ahead now and actually uh, figure out um, how to get the 10,000 first prime. All right. So let's go ahead and create another um, static long method. All right. So I'm going to call this, I'm just call this uh, 10,000 10, and one prime. And this is going to take in a limit. So I'm just going to, ah, whatever. I'll keep it with long since I'm already using longs. All right. So, uh, what we want to do first is we need to keep track. We need to keep track of a counter. So this time I'm actually going to start this counter at one because, uh, we really count from one. And, uh, I want something to hold the answer, the results. So I'm going to say, uh, long, uh, results equal to zero then what i want to do is create a for loop so i'm going to say for since uh particular itself already ruled out one as it not being the prime we can start at two we start our loop at two all right so i'm going to go ahead and say um long x equals to two right and then i'm going to say uh while uh counter is less than or equal to the limit we're going to go ahead and increment x right okay so next we're going to say if right is prime and then x so if x is prime then uh we're going to say that result yeah it's equal to x right and then counter plus plus all right and then what we have to do is just return result and that's it so here what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and show you guys how I typically run um, how I typically test my functions and stuff or methods to see how fast the algorithm works and depending on how fast or how slow the algorithm is I typically will uh, sit down and figure out how to optimize it and uh, most of the time if it's for these problems if it's above one second I will typically find a way to fix it um, it shouldn't be up to a minute it should this problem should not this particular problems so the one especially the ones that have five percent difficulty should not be tremendously um, long when it comes to the runtime so if it's really really long and taking me forever then you're doing something wrong. So what I'm gonna do is create a long and I'm gonna call this start. And then I'm gonna use our system class and I'm gonna get the current uh, milliseconds. I'm gonna do SLT here. And I'm actually gonna run our um, 10,001 and I'm gonna pass in, um, okay. I'm going to pass in the value, which is going to be 10,001 here for the, this thing. And then I'm going to create another variable here. And I'm going to call this end. And this is going to equal uh, system uh, current milliseconds. Because we want to get the start time and the end time. And then what I want to do is do SRT here. And I'm going to say this is going to be in seconds. All right. And then I'm just going to go ahead and get the time so what we want to do is we want to take the end time minus the start time all right and then all we need to do is we need to divide that by 1000 to convert it to um to convert it to uh this thing to seconds and then what we need to do is we need to first cast this to a double so that we get a floating point number 
All right, so with that said and done, we'll go ahead and run this. And uh, we get our answer. And you guys can see that this runs in 0 0.026 um, of a second. So this will be it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Um, if you guys like it, subscribe. And uh, if you have a better solution, please post it down in the section comment in the comment section below so that we can all talk about it and, um, you know, learn from each other. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Have a good day. Bye bye.